Scotty Danielman, Mike here, the DRF race of the day for Wednesday, March the 13th. Race number six at Tampa Bay Downs. We kick off a 50 cent pick four with this $20,000 claiming race for Phillies and Mares going a mile and 40 yards. Let's take a look at this group. Breaking from the inside, the number one, Music Amore. Two to one on the morning line, Mike. Very popular in the claim box. No surprise considering she won an off turf $100,000 stakes race in 2022 to give her some black type. That's true. Uh, and she is, you know, second off the layoff here, Dan, coming back right at the same level off the claim. And she has speed from the inside. She's not that hard to make a case for against this field. And stretching out is probably going to be her game. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Breaking from the inside post with a sprint race off the layoff under her girth, I would expect her to show good speed. The seven passion for treasure is pretty quick, but to be honest with you, if passion for treasure goes, I would expect the apprentice rider on Music Amor to just let her go and just sit second. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad trip. Um, you got to come out of there running either way and head to the first turn like you want to be on the lead and then see what happens because she has enough speed to, I think, just get really aggressive in this race. Then I thought the key to the pace might be the number three waterworks. I just feel like she's better when she can be involved early in her races. So I I'd be surprised if they were rating here. Music Amore, the number one, received a nice tightener last time out. It was her first race since uh, starting over the summer at Ellis Park. She ran seven eighths of a mile. She showed speed. She tired. She was claimed out of that race and less than two weeks later was listed as a vet scratch. So it's been more than a month after that for her to get back into the entries. That being said, her credentials speak for themselves. A five-time winner. She's earned some money. She's done well in her career. It feels like she's probably just been facing some better horses along the way here, Dan. I, I do think that there's a chance she just runs a lot better her here second off the layoff this trainer doesn't have great numbers first off the claim though i mean he wins a lot of races but he doesn't have great numbers first off the claim and this horse will be a short price in here you know i wasn't way against her but i also didn't feel like she just had to win Number two is Gabby Squared, a former Chad Brown trained horse back in the day, and she'll be making her dirt debut in start number 30, racing primarily on turf and a few races on the synthetic surface at Woodbine. She's by Jack Milton, basically a turf sire, 10% winners with dirt riders. She is a half to three dirt winners. Yeah, and she was in just way over her head first off the layoff last time on the turf, and this is a, a better spot for her. I don't know, you know what you're really going to get on dirt from her. It's nice, I guess, to know that she's handled the other two surfaces just fine. I I'll admit, I've been a pretty big fan of hers. When Chad Brown had her way back when, I did a lot of chasing of her and never did any good with her. But I'm still a fan. I'm interested to see what she does on the dirt. Waterworks is the number three, and this horse was claimed out of her most recent start. It was a victory for only an $8,000 claiming tag. Let's watch Waterworks right now. And as Mike mentioned, she has speed. She got right up close to the pace in this race. She had a very comfortable trip. She was battling with a 30 to one shot, took over at will on the turn, and just keeps on trudging along over that wet track. She has been in very consistent form. She's hit the board in her last four, and she considered trip. Yeah, I mean, she just shows up and runs pretty well every single time. This is a move up in class for her, though. I think you have to be aware of that and just wait and see what kind of price she goes off at in here. And again, I just the more I looked at her, and maybe you want to expand on this, Dan, I don't know if you looked at her the same way. When I go through her races, I feel like when she's involved early, she's way better. That race too back really concerns me. They tried to rate and sit off of another horse. And she just, I know it looks close at the end. She really couldn't make it close in there. I did not like that performance. Well, it's a fair point. I mean, all four of her wins have come when she's on the lead. And it's unlikely that she'll make the lead in here. I just think the one's quicker. And I think that the seven's going to be hustled out of there. So she'll have to probably work out a pace tracking trip. And so at that point, you have to decide what price are you willing to take? I think three to one is fair based on her current form. But as you say, she's stepping up in class and might have to do it from a different running perspective. Kem Major is up next. This horse scored off the claim two starts back. Last time out finished fourth, going a mile and 40 yards in a starter allowance that day. I think this is somewhat of a lateral move for another horse that can be tactical and sit just off the lead. But there's another horse that has shown speed as well in the past. Yeah, agreed. I, I'm not sure if this is a tougher spot or not. It may not be, Dad. I mean, the horse that won that most recent start she was in, I think that's, a, that's like, that was her 16th career win or something. I mean, she was in against a good horse there. I thought she ran well. Uh, two starts back when she won that race. Um, and she has figures to just make her really competitive. You know, since they stretched her out in distance, she's three for six. One of those losses by a nose. And there could be a real good trip coming here. 
So the one, the three, and the four all have speed. The horse on the outside has speed. Maybe it sets up for a stalker or a closer, like Gabby Squared, the two, or the five chestnut checkers, who finished third last time out behind Waterworks. Waterworks had a major tactical advantage getting the jump on chestnut checkers. Maybe chestnut checkers stepping up off the claim gets a better setup this time. Yeah, maybe so. Um, and that was also a wet track in the most recent start, too, which you didn't have to love, I guess. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to tell. Um, I just, more than anything else, I just found it hard to to decide how good she actually is that i mean she looks a little bit slow i know there are no you know super fast figures in this race but she looks a little slow on paper but i can't say i'm blown away by her current form I think our fantasy is a horse that would really take advantage. Is probably the best closer in this race. She's hit the board in 33 of 48. She's a 10-time winner. And maybe she was pace compromised last time out when running second with a respectable speed figure. She's going to get a setup. In this race, you see our fantasy just says, too much ground to make up going six and a half furlongs. But she tries real hard to run second this day. She has one going sprint to route in the past. And again, the race flow likely a lot better this time. Yeah, she's going to need a setup, it seems like. This is a race we picked up the replay right after she had real trouble coming off the turn there and it's not that hard when you go back and watch the full thing she was coming with a full head of steam around that turn there dan it wouldn't be that hard to make the argument that she gets a clean run she wins that race she ran really really well there i don't mind her her race is going a little bit longer either she's just going to need to get the right trigger she's a little pace in front of her Perhaps the seven passion for treasure is just a little bit dirtied up. She's going to return to her preferred dirt surface after racing once on the Tapita at Gulfstream, once on the turf at Tampa Bay, and the start prior to that was off of a layoff sprinting. You go back to her thistle down races, she's approached the buyer par for this level in those starts, although they were sprinting. They were sprinting. Yeah, I didn't, I mean, it, it's, it was hard for me to decide what to do with her form from last year because I didn't really like any of her races, but they were just keeping her in allowance company the entire time sprinting and maybe those races were just too tough she just kept settling for second or third and not really winning i can easily make excuses for those three most recent starts and she's a great price on the line before we take a look at our top selections please click the subscribe button on the daily racing form youtube channel for the latest drf videos let's take a look at our top picks for wednesday's drf race of the day it's the sixth of tampa bay kicking off the 50 cent pick four our fantasy just a completely different setup likely to come didn't get a lot of pace, got jammed up a little bit last time out, now gets more distance and more pace to attack. Yeah, it should be a, a totally different setup for her here. Stretching out is really not supposed to be an issue. For her, it's just all about what kind of trip can she pull. It's all about whether Waterworks can sit off the leaders, and I think that's going to be the key to this race. If she can and make that move she made last time, sort of a mid-race bid to the front, she could be in control turning for home, and that's where I want her to be. I think that's where she could be the most successful. I won't take anything less than her morning line of 3-1. to one. Three six five two for me, six two one three for Mike. Wednesday's DRF race of the day, the 6th of Tampa Bay. Good luck.